Hello everyone, this is Chad Fox. I'm doing a tutorial today for CNC and C controller setup for your inline cut. Now, but this is a, here's the exciting part. You now you're getting your table finished up, you're going through the, the setup procedures and getting, getting everything dialed in. Now, how do we create a line with the software that you have to, to do these test cuts? Now, your computer should come already uploaded with Inkscape. It's a free download, so if it's not, you can download it on your computer and or your or a regular laptop or PC that you have so that you can do these inline test cuts. Now let's uh, if you've already got it uploaded um, we'll go ahead and open it up and I'll show you how to do it. Excuse me. It's allergy season. Okay now we're getting escape open and what are we going to do here? Now we need to draw a line here. Um, this box right here in the center of your screen um, can be set up for a direct representation of your table depending on how you have it configured within Sheet Cam. Now I'll show you how to go ahead and get this set up so we can get started. Come up here to File. In the drop down menu, come down to Document Properties. Go ahead and click on Document Properties and another pop up screen will come up. Now this is all the information pertinent to your screen for your ruler up here on the top and the side and also this box as well. Now as you can see our display units are in metric and also our main units. Uh, I live here in the United States and we use standard inches and standardized measurements. So if you want to change this to American measurements just go click on the arrow, drop down to inches, select on it and it changed our increments here to inches for our ruler on our top and our side. Uh, the main units, we want to go ahead and change that two inches as well. And now that we have that set, we're ready to start configuring our workspace. Now this workspace here can be configured to whatever size table that you have. So if you have a 48 inch table by 48 inch table, that's this is where you'll program it in here. Um, it's just as easy as 48.00 by 48 inches. 48.00, enter. As you can see, this box changed automatically on my screen. Um, then we'll go ahead and show you a little shortcut here um, that's going to be your friend. Um, using Inkscape and, and this operating system, uh, Shift and Control key on your keyboard is going to be your friend. Um, by holding a Control button down and using your mouse wheel to scroll up and down, as you can see, we're zooming in and out. Uh, this is a really handy shortcut. Now to pan, now I say I want to move this box to the center of the screen. <clears throat> Use your uh, scroll wheel, push straight down until it clicks. And then I can pan and move this around anywhere on my, where, anywhere I want on my screen. Uh, another little shortcut is um, your scroll wheel up and down moves your screen up and down. If you hold your shift key down, scroll up and down, it moves it left and right. So we'll go ahead and leave it there for now. Okay, um, configuring up your table. Um, say you build a f uh, four foot, four, four, uh, four foot by eight foot table, or a five by ten foot table. Um, you configure this whether you have it configured in sheet cam, whether up and down, or horizontal. Um, I'll go ahead and set it up how I have mine configured, so you can see how we do it. So I've got a ten foot table, so we're going to put 120 inches in by five foot, which is 60 inches. As you can see, it automatically configured my workspace to a 5 foot by 10 foot area. Now once we get here, um, this is pretty much all we need to do for now. Um, but I want to go ahead and show you that there are some tools on here that's going to be really helpful for you um, moving forward when you actually start getting design and parts. Uh, guides, um, grids, and snap features are very handy if you choose to use them for your des designing your parts but that's for another tutorial but I just want to go ahead and show them to you but now at this point we can go ahead and close this out okay now we have our workspace set up now how do we get a line within this box here so that we can do our inline cuts um, as far as I know all the Inkscape programs and versions this toolbar right here all is the same on all of them as far as I know if there's another if there's one out there that's not I'm not aware of it but how we draw lines is come halfway down to this pen looking tool here it's called your bezier tool we're going to select on it as you can see for us old schoolers it kind of looks like an old fountain pen tip with a crosshair so anywhere within here we can go ahead and click and drag now as you can see we can make this line whichever angle and however long and short we want um, 
something like this isn't going to work for us very well for our inline cut. So how do we get this straight up and down or straight horizontal? Okay, again, hold your control key down. Now as I move this, see how this snaps to certain degrees already preset within Inkscape? Now you can set these up for whatever you would like, but that's for another day as well. Today we're just doing inline cut. So if we're going to go horizontal, we'll, we'll drag it out here a little bit. Don't worry about the measurement, measurement of the line yet. Or if you want to come up, you can come up here. But just go ahead and draw your line out and click on the screen. Okay, now we have a line already set here. And as you can see, we have a tail. This tool will be very useful as you um, progress and start designing parts for other things. But uh, to create and use just this line here that we just drew, you're just going to hit Enter. Now, as you can see, we have a line here. So I'm going to come up here to my selector tool. As you can see, it's already selected. Now, the line that we just drew is 54 inches, 0.885, and 0 0.010 high. Now, how we configure this line length is, okay, because okay, since this is going, the line is going horizontal, if it was going up and down, it would be your height. But since we're going horizontal here, we're going to come up here to our width. And we're going to set this for 24 inches. Now, uh, CNCNC recommends between 16 to 20 inch line cuts um, so that you have, you have time to get your monitor your, or your torch voltage so that you can get accurate, accurate baseline so that you know how to, to tweak or make adjustments accordingly. Um, I would recommend doing 24 inches. Um, but just keep in mind, the longer this line is, the more metal you're going to be wasting for the testing and setup process. But for right now, we'll go ahead and leave it at 24 inches. Um, now, the, the line thickness. Now, it is recommended um, that this line only be um, 0 0.002. Now, with, with these particular systems and setups, um, this will work for, even if it's 0 0.009, 0 0.010. I normally try to keep it between 0 0.006 and 0 0.009 for my hairline. Now your hairline, I'm going to scroll in here a little bit, is what your CNC cutter is actually following to create your G-code. The wider this line is, the more variations it can get off. The thinner this line is, the more accurate you're going to be. Say, um, okay, so you're doing this for the first time, and say when you punch in your 24 inches here, um, this number here is way off from where it needs to be. I'm going to show you how to correct this. Now, if if you configure yours like mine and you've already got all these toolbars over here set up, um, which I'm assuming you don't, so I'm going to show you where it's at up here on the screen. So if you come up to Object, click on Object, come down, and you'll find Fill and Stroke. That is the same tool that I have over here preset because those are the ones I use on a regular basis. So we're going to click on Fill and Stroke. It pops up this little screen over here. Uh, now we're not going to worry about fill for right now. That's for uh, that I'll cover that in another video later. Um, but we're going to go over here to stroke style. Stroke style. Once we get it pulled down, as you can see, it's a matrix, and our and our, our measurements here are the same. This is 0.007. This is 0.175. We'll just go ahead and select this to inches as well, since we have the rest of the table set up in, in U.S. measurements. Now our measurements are the same. Um, let me go ahead and make sure this line is selected for black so it's easily seen. Yep. Now, um, let me show you what happens when you set this to 002. This is what's recommended. Now, as you can see, you can barely, barely see that line zoomed out, or where I'm currently zoomed at. I zoom out one time, that line disappears. This is why I don't like setting the line that thick. Um, my table has run fine for over a year with this being a 0 .009, so that's what we'll set it as. That way it's easier to see. Um, once, you, once it's accepted in here, it'll be the same here, and pretty much you're done. Um, now we're gonna move, I normally always move this down. You don't have to, I just got in the habit of doing it. It makes it easier for me. I'll move this down to the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, because this corner here is where I have my table set up for it being oriented off of now, say you get in and you try to make your test cut, you enter a sheet cam, and you realize you configure, configured this wrong. Um, you needed to have 10 foot or 10 foot up and down instead of horizontal like I have it. Um, no big deal. Just open back Inkscape back up. You come in here, 
come back down to document properties and go ahead and, re and then readjust your workspace here and if you need to move this line to where it's hor uh, vertical instead of horizontal it's really easy just go to your select tool select your line come up here to object and come down here and you can rotate this clockwise or counterclockwise now on this here it doesn't really matter either way but when you start working on other other parts and designing things yeah this comes in really handy so we'll just go ahead and click on 90 degrees and as you can see it automatically changed it for you um, change it back reverse process just go ahead and click it and now we're back to here next next step from here is going in and saving it um, when I when I save it to in, enter in, enter in on my control computer, I always convert to black and white because um, the contrast in it, it makes it easier for sheet cam to to realize what's what's going to be your cut line and what's not. So just make sure you when you save these and import them into sheet cam, they're black and white. Black open your white will be your open space or void for your parts, and your black will be the actual material. But to save this, all you do is come up here to file, do save as. Um, you can create an Inkscape folder to create to save all your drawings in, um, or if you're going to save it on a jump drive like I do and take it out to uh, to my shop to work off of, and then you'll know, come up here and then plug, plug in your jump drive, come down and select your jump drive, create a drawings folder so it's easily found, and then you can save it on your jump drive as well. But I always save a copy of it on my computer that I'm working on. I do all my design work. Um, as you can see, I've already got one set here for 24-inch test cut, so we're going to go ahead and select on that and go ahead and save. It's going to ask me if I want to replace it. We want to replace it, and that's, it's as simple as that. Um, I will go ahead and stop this video here, and I will just go out to the garage, just uh, fire up my, my camera or my phone, and I will continue this video out there.